Disclaimer, I have done intensive research on how to file Schedule K-1 and 1099-B, the steps to show you to avoid duplication reporting for the partnership ETF. It is for your reference. You need to do your own diligence and consult your tax advisor to determine how you should file. When you purchase Partnership ETF, Brokers 1099B will report gain or loss of your investment, included in total amounts. Schedule K-1 issued by the Partnership will report gain or loss as well. Both 1099B and Schedule K-1 are required to be filed. After you complete both, you need to adjust the tax basis in 1099B to avoid duplication of reporting capital gain or loss on these ETF. Step 1. Complete 1099B from your broker. In 1099B, there are total amounts of proceeds, cost, wash, sale, loss disallowed. All these amounts need to be reported exactly. 1099B sent from broker to you in IRS has total amounts. These total amounts include partnership ETF gain or loss, Worksheet 8949, sent from broker, is detailed report supporting 1099B. 8949 is very helpful when you file the return. When you use tax software, you find gain or loss on the sale of investment. This is how to file. Find box A total line in 8949. These numbers you need to enter into the software. In this screen, I highlight it as red. Since this includes whole year, just enter the beginning of the year and the end of the year. You also need to enter wash sale not allowed amount. Find box B total line in 8949. These numbers you need to enter into the software. In this screen, I highlight it as red. Note box B, column E, cost and other basis amount is not sent to IRS. So this is the place you do adjustment for partnership ETF. $8,100 box B total is what I used to illustrate the calculation throughout this video. After you completed all boxes in 8949, you reported gain or loss for your investment for partnership ETF at this step. Step 2. Complete Schedule K-1 issued from the partnership. Look at the Schedule K-1, the left side has A to M, plus right side, top two boxes, final K-1, and amended K-1. The right side has boxes 1 to 20. This information helps you to answer the questions through tax software. To file Schedule K-1, you go to Partnership Income, Form 1065, Schedule K-1. When you see this screen, click Yes to fill up left side of Schedule K-1. Pay attention to how to enter percentage amount. Pay attention to how to enter withdrawal amount. When you see the screen, click check marks to all the boxes you have amounts in and follow to enter the amounts in next pages. When you finish, choose All Investment is at Risk, and finish the remaining questions. Now you report a gain or loss that partnership passed to you at this step. After Step 1 and 2, you reported twice gain or loss through 1099B and Schedule K-1. Gain or loss of 1099B is the difference between your proceeds and cost basis. Gain or loss of Schedule K-1 is the partnership gain or loss passing to you based on your shares and holding period, because during this period, you are the passive partner. These two are different concepts. Step 3. Find out how much is the adjustment and go back to 1099B to adjust. 
Check Schedule K1 first to understand some concepts. Notice line L on the left side. The current increase is 138. On the right side, box 8 is 92. Box 11C is 48, totaling 140. Box 13K is 2. This is Schedule K1 preparation fee, so you need to subtract it. All boxes total 138. Left side equals right side. Now check some final pages of Schedule K1. You will see column 5 or 6 titled Cumulative Adjustment to Tax Basis. Add all the numbers together, you will get a total of 138, a positive number in this example. So through Schedule K1, you have reported a gain 138, but you also reported a gain or loss through 1099B. In our example, we have cost basis 8100 for box B from 8949. Schedule K1 tax basis is positive 138, so we need to increase cost basis to take out duplicate gain in 1099B. New cost 8100 plus 138 equals 8238. This is vice versa scenario. If Schedule K1, cumulative adjustment to tax basis total is negative, a loss, you add the amount back to 1099B. In our example, you need to change 8100 cost basis to 7962 to avoid duplicated loss. If partnership ETF was not sold at the end of year and it runs over multiple years, it will tie at the year you sold the ETF. Difference will carry over to next year. You just use tax basis amount to do the adjustment. On the following, I have used real examples to show you how multiple years work. Just read every note I have on the screens.
Here I show you how the multiple numbers you entered will end up in the places of 1040 form. If you want to avoid Schedule K1, you need to know which ETF has partnership in nature. If you Google list of ETFs that issue K1, you will see quite a long list. Just to name a few popular partnership nature ETFs that will issue Schedule K1. Before you file the return, the software will ask you to run alerts to verify what you entered. It will alert you for the wash sale. Just ignore because this is not an error and you need to enter the amount to tie to 1099B.